my thanks to uh, folks here at ML Eddy for allowing <coughs> us to come and uh, uh, be in this historic uh, building. And you know, you, you can't get much more Texas than uh, boots and saddles. Amen. So uh, uh, I'd be hard pressed to find a better place to uh, have an event um, that makes a better example of small businesses than this one that we're in here today. Um, and I think it is a good reflection of the foundation of our state's economy. Um, I want to thank uh, everyone for uh, taking part in what uh, I hope will be an essential conversation about the future of our state. Uh, we're here today to talk about one of the core elements of a relationship between government and its citizens, and that's the issue of trust. Um, I believe that government is bound by sacred trust with the consent of the governed to ensure that uh, the rights and the freedoms of citizens are never trampled in the rush to be all things to all people. It is uh, time to take specific steps to guard uh, that trust, specifically when it comes to uh, the taxpayer's dollars. Here in Texas, we have a history of maintaining that trust, making tough choices in the pursuit of fiscal <coughs> discipline. It's been interesting for me to watch as we have been disciplined in this state while other states have uh, freely increased taxes and spending. Uh, back in 2003, when we faced a $10 billion budget uh, deficit, we heard the calls across the, uh, the state and places to raise the taxes to uh, even up to and including uh, calling for a personal income tax. But we opted to follow the same approach required of a family or a business when times get tough. Um, we rolled up our sleeves and we went to work. Uh, we ranked our priorities and we made tough decisions, choosing to find dollars through spending cuts instead of massive tax increases. We caught our fair share of flat. Uh, but the tough choices were made that set the stage for the prosperity uh, that was in the future uh, for this state. And our state's current status as the nation's economic leader is one of the uh, uh, byproducts of those tough decisions. As the national economy has spiraled downward, our low taxes, our predictable regulations, our fair legal system has enabled us to weather this storm better than most, if not all, of our fellow states. In fact, last year, while other states were scrambling to make ends meet, we were able to balance our budget. Kelly and his colleagues uh, protected uh, our rainy day fund. They gave a major tax cut to 40,000 small businesses. Here in Texas, we're fortunate to have fiscal conservative leaders like Kelly Hancock, who make those tough calls. Um, we, when government resorts to endlessly expanding programs, uh, throttling economic growth by raising taxes, it's the citizens who truly pay the price. Um, as that particular mindset holds sway over Washington, D.C. today, um, I think it is more important than ever for us to take clear steps to protect our citizens and protect them from the excesses of unrestrained government uh, at every level. That's why I'm proposing two constitutional amendments for the people of Texas to consider. The first will require two-thirds votes of the entire Texas legislature to raise any tax. This sets a nice high hurdle for lawmakers inclined to raise taxes, requiring broader support for decisions of that magnitude. Uh, the second will require the legislature to ensure spending growth does not exceed the combined growth of inflation and population growth in this state. This would allow the state to keep pace with a growing population and account for the upward pressure exerted by inflation while protecting the hardworking Texas families uh, from those who want to raise taxes and expand the size, the reach, and the power of government in their lives. These two sensible amendments will essentially engrave our proven physical discipline into the bedrock of state law, expressing our commitment to taxpayer protections 
in the clearest forms. Also will give stability and predictability, which I think will set Texas apart even farther. This brings me to my third proposal to protect taxpayer dollars and strengthen the public trust. Over the years, we have taken important steps to better prevent, detect, and eliminate waste, fraud, and abuse in state government. Whether you're a state agency or do business with the state, we made it clear that you must exercise the highest integrity and maintain the clearest accountability when it comes to the taxpayers' dollars. One of the best examples is our Health and Human Services Commission, whose Office of Inspector General was created by the legislature in 2003. Uh, then Representative Arlene Wogelmuth uh, carried that legislation. Since its establishment, that office has closed more than 420,000 investigations against health care providers and clients. Uh, that is a correct number, 420,000 investigations and recovered or saved more than $4.6 billion. Those are real dollars that we're talking about, taxpayers' dollars that have been saved because of that wise stewardship. At agencies like the Health and Human Services Commission, inspector generals have provided strong independent oversight, wisely exercised their authority to launch investigations and recover taxpayer dollars in the process. Following this example, we should establish a statewide office of inspector general working across state agencies and uh, use those to identify and investigate fraud and abuse. This statewide OIG will provide strong independent oversight of agencies, help our hardworking state employees be even more efficient and effective when it comes to our taxpayer dollars. These three proposals. These three proposals are the best chance to strengthen our state's fundamental taxpayer <clears throat> protections and sustain that essential trust relationship with our citizens no matter what uh, the future may hold. 